30 years after the first known HIV-AIDS infections, there have been dramatic advancements against the epidemic. That progress will be the focus of the 19th International AIDS Conference in Washington, known as AIDS 2012. What was once a death sentence has become chronic disease with antiretroviral drug treatment. But how did a disease reach epidemic proportions in such a short time? Scientists believe the human immunodeficiency virus HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, was transmitted from chimpanzees in the jungles of present-day Democratic Republic of the Congo. In 1981, homosexual men in California began experiencing disease symptoms including rare cancers that baffled doctors. In 1983, French researcher Dr. Luc Montagnier and American scientist Dr. Robert Gallo of the National Cancer Institute were in a race to identify HIV as the cause of the illness. In 1985, HIV-AIDS has reached global epidemic proportions and there was no treatment. Fueling the AIDS epidemic was the stigma surrounding the disease and an unwillingness to get tested. That's something the AIDS quilt was created in 1986 to combat. In 1987, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first drug capable of slowing the onset of full-blown AIDS, AZT. Because of uh, the HIV virus that I have obtained. Uh... In 1991, NBA superstar Magic Johnson held a press conference and announced he had the HIV virus. Sure that you tell people to go get tested. Johnson and then... gave a face to the disease it had never had before. That same year, the red ribbon became the symbol of AIDS awareness. In 1997, Dr. David Ho devised HEART, highly active antiretroviral therapy, a new treatment regimen that had patients treated earlier and more aggressively than ever before. This led to the first drop in AIDS cases since the discovery of the disease. In 2003, President George W. Bush announced the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, to help combat the AIDS epidemic in developing nations. By 2009, PEPFAR had helped 5.2 million people gain access to life-saving drugs and treatments. UNAIDS reports that in 2011, more than 8 million people in low- and middle-income countries were receiving treatment. But there's much work to be done. UNAIDS says 1.7 million people died of AIDS-related causes in 2011. Also, while the U.S. finally lifted its travel ban for people living with HIV, UNAIDS says there are still 46 countries, territories and areas that still restrict such people from entering or staying. Welcome to the United States! But this week, at AIDS 2012 in Washington, the mood is hopeful that the tide is turning and that if nations can simply muster the political will, they can bring the HIV pandemic to an end. I'm 27 years old. I have been living with HIV for 12 years. This area is a very poor area. I have many friends who are living with HIV. I have friends who have died. We go out of our way to bring the information to the people and empower them.